Swords are cool. There's nothing that says masculinity more than swinging around a large, sharp, phallic-shaped object until you get to penetrate your opponent to become the victor or, or something. Anyway, swords are definitely cool. I've always found sword fights far more satisfying than gunfights. There's something about a physical connection in the fight to determine good versus evil or stronger versus weaker or get your retribution to kill, killing someone um, via skill and physical strength uh, up close and personal, seeing the whites of their eyes over potentially getting in a lucky gunshot from around the corner. So with all that in mind, um, we've been thinking about some the nine most cool swords from video games. So at number nine to start us off is uh, Cloud Strike's Buster Sword from Final Fantasy VII. Um, and this is especially relevant as the uh, remake just came out on the uh, PlayStation. Um, so check that out if you haven't seen this sword. But anyways, um, so when you build a sword that's literally larger than your own body, there's a very, very good chance that it's literally just so that you can kill people. Um, this is previously a sword that belonged to his deceased friend, Zach Fair, um, and before him, Angel Hewley, I think. Um, it measures between five feet to six feet long with a single edge blade that's over one foot wide. So basically, this is an absolutely gigantic juggernaut of a sword that is literally bigger than the character that wields it. As, I don't know, there's just something very satisfying about seeing him sort of uh, sling it over his shoulder and walk with it sort of resting until he's ready to use it in his fight. And number eight, we have the energy sword from the Halo series. Um, Halo is known for its slew of futuristic guns and weapon-based trigger-happy vehicles, um, but let's not forget about devastating energy sword. Um, certainly one of the coolest looking um, swords out there. Um, it's generally a one-hit kill melee weapon, um, and it became a fan favorite from Halo 2 when you first get got to use it, um, starting with being Arbiter. Um, wielding this magnetically gas-based sword meant inevitable death for any player who entered your vicinity. With the click of a button, you rendered your enemy useless, instantly killing them due to the impact of the sword's infallible burn. This new weapon, favoured by the Arbiters, became a powerhouse among all Spartans, whether they were playing the in-game campaign or the infamous online mode. And coming in at number seven is a personal favorite of ours, the Sword of Aeons from Fable. Um, there's a lot I could say on this sword, but we've actually recently done a video on it. So um, we'll link that in the description for you to check out if you want a full in-depth uh, discussion on this sword. Um, but as a quick summary, this is kind of uh, the big sword of the main villain of the original Fable. Um, and in order to get it, you need to uh, do some very, very bad things. Um, and once you get it, it is basically the best sword in the game. So you become a god. Number six, uh, Soul Edge from the Soul Calibur series of games. Um, it's called Soul Edge because the sword has its own soul. It's kind of really where the name of the games come from. Um, and it can transform depending on the wielder. Um, so if you're uh, like a certain way, it, basically the sword shifts um, and changes depending on you um, so when a sword um, is the main antagonist in a series you know it's bound to hold great power uh, soul edge became a demonic weapon after being bathed in blood and hatred some pretty cool stuff uh, this sword takes over all who wield it driving them to insanity and devouring their souls and again it can change its form depending on the current owner and the victim um, the soul edge is most recognized for sporting a giant evil eye at the base of its hilt with flesh growing from its cross guard um, it's definitely one badass sword capable of not only dealing insane amounts of damage but inflicting it onto its wielder too you have to be insane to use or fight against this iconic blade from soul Calibur. and at number five we have the blades of chaos from god of war um, i think these are probably one of the most symbolic and traditional weapons of the god of war series um, the blades of chaos are basically um, a pair of blades at the end of chains um, forged in the underworld by Ares himself, the god of war. Um, Ares created the weapons for his servant, which is why the blades are permanently seared onto the arms of the user. Um, the god of war is the only one who can remove it before the servitude time has ended. Um, Kratos used to be the servant of Ares, which made him the wielder of the blades of chaos, um, and under the manipulation of Ares, Kratos used the weapons to kill his own family without knowing it. Um, later on, after he killed Ares and became the god of war himself, he swore to never use them again. Yeah, and as we know, with that one, that didn't work out quite so well. Yeah. Um, 
later on. Which uh, was an awesome it. moment in God of War 4, by the way. It was probably my favorite moment, yes. Um, check out our video on that too um, for more. Um, so at number four, uh, we have Rebellion from Devil May Cry. Um, so Rebellion is the primary weapon of Dante um, in the Devil May Cry series. It was passed on to him by his father, Sparta, the legendary Dark Knight, not Batman. Um, unlike the Yamato, which can separate man from devil, Rebellion can join the two forces together. Rebellion is a powerful sword with outstanding durability. However, its true strength can only be awakened by Dante's blood while Dante is using his devil trigger, which does then happen later on in the game. So the sword, uh, in the series, sorry, the sword will then turn into the devil sword Dante, allowing Dante to use both of his human and devil parts to the full potential. And at number three, we have Yoshimitsu, uh, which is very, very similar to the Soul Calibur sword. Um, and actually, there is some speculation that these two swords are one and the same. Um, but essentially... Um, there's a there's a lot of lore behind this where um, the real life Japanese leader Oda Nobunaga uh, wanted the mysterious Manji clan to join his side, and Yoshimitsu um, consistently declined. Um, but upon returning home, he found that his entire clan had been slaughtered by Nobunaga's forces as an in, uh, due to the insult Yoshimitsu uh, went after Nobunaga himself, but was completely overwhelmed and had his arm chopped off in battle. Um, he then replaced his arm with this steam, uh, steampunk prosthetic, um, and then he went on a one-man sort of suicide mission to get this badass sword uh, so that he could get the revenge that he was seeking. Um, after sort of a long journey, he eventually does uh, retrieve it. We might actually end up doing a video on this in the future because this is a really, really interesting topic. Um, but essentially... Um, the sword is similarly to the Soul Calibur um, Soul Edge sword, um, sort of a, I guess, villainous sword as well. And it often um, sort of overwhelms Yoshimitsu with this this like evil energy as well. Um, but Yoshimitsu sort of swears to use it uh, for heroic deeds, kind of like Robin Hood. So he becomes a, a heroic bandit with the use of the sword. Um, and he made his name for himself doing this. Um, and then, obviously, during the Tekken games, it's it's also speculated that each Yoshimitsu is a different holder of the blade, much like uh, Soul Edge. So th there's definitely a lot to go into there. And at number two, we have Frostmourne from World of Warcraft. Um, so World of Warcraft is another game that I've spent like long, long time in it. But um, one thing that I know above all is this sword. Um, it's pretty iconic. So it was a rune blade which once belonged to the Light King, the Master, and the Lord of the Scourge. The Light King was a spirit created by Kiljaiden, the deceiver from the soul of the orc shaman um, Nezul, to raise an undead army, which is already pretty cool. Um, however, the Light King spirit was contained inside the armor and the Frostmourne. And then later on, the young prince Arthas Menethil found the sword and traded his soul for the power to defeat Malganis, which he did. Soon after that, Arthas lost the remaining of his soul and became the Light King himself. And Arthas is able to wield Frostmourne easily despite its size and weight. The sword can cut through most opponents with little effort and will shatter most weapons that touch it. People who get killed by Frostmourne will have their soul drawn into the sword. Um... And one of the reasons why this is at number two, just uh, to, to say out there, even though I haven't played this game as much, it's just because of the iconic level, but also the, I guess, the fanfare around it. So you can go into any games workshop in the world and they will always have like a replica of this. Um, I think everyone probably knows it, even if they don't realize they know it by sight. And obviously you're watching this video now see um, images of this sword um, on, on, on display. So you'll probably recognize it. Um, it's pretty cool. And finally coming in at number one is uh, probably the biggest cheat sword on our list, uh, the lightsaber from Star Wars. And this is um, easily, I think, the most iconic one on the list here, and that's why it's landed in the number one slot. Um, but they are definitely swords. I mean, sa saber is a type of sword. Um, and they do feature in video games, and we really, really want one for ourselves. And I think anybody who has ever watched or played a Star Wars uh, franchise thing has wanted a lightsaber, uh, lightsaber too. Um, imagine having your own. You, you literally get to build up your own from the hilt. Um, in sort of Star Wars lore, you often get to choose the crystal as well, or the crystal chooses you in some cases. Um, and you get to sort of change how your hilt looks with the emitter and the main section. Um, you choose whether to have a double blade or single blade with the curved hilt like Count Dooku. 
Um, you can choose how long the saber might be and even the color, although that's also sometimes based on the crystal as well. Um, and then when somebody finally steps up to you, you can just ignite it and see the look in their eyes and the reflection of your lightsaber reflected in their eyes. And you know whether you practice the light side or dark side of the force, you're going to be an absolute god. Definitely uh, my favorite on this list. And I think uh, it's yours as well, isn't it? What, what lightsaber would you have? Oh, I reckon I'd have a, a fairly standard uh, double-bladed purple lightsaber for sure. Uh, you go with the purple. Yeah, I would. Um, I was always a purple, a purple fan myself. I know they created it for Samuel Jackson's character, but obviously the lore that's been established since then is pretty awesome. Um, I would be probably a curved hilt like Dooku with a purple blade, um, plus a second one that's more of like a dagger, um, potentially to kind of be able to fend off from that side as well. Um, that's always what I would say and I, I quite like the gold the gold color hill that a bit similar you know, you know the um palpatine's lightsaber yeah anyway cool so, so that's our list um do you guys agree Are there any swords that you would have liked to have seen in there um and before we do i'm gonna rip a band-aid off here um there's two that i was gonna i was thinking about putting in the list and then i realized that this is our favorites and it's an opinion piece it's not a i guess a definitive um you know this is official the best swords ever um, so the two are the Master Sword from Zelda. People are probably going to give us grief for that. However, I'm not a massive Zelda fan. Uh, again, don't at me. Um, but, yeah, so I didn't want to put that in the list because I'm not a big Zelda fan. And the other one is probably the, the Key Sword or the Key Blade from Kingdom Hearts, which is pretty iconic, um, and it's pretty cool. However, again, not a massive fan of those games, so I didn't put that in the list. Um, but I'm giving it the honorable mention now so that you guys can realize that I am aware of it. I'm not an idiot. I just didn't put it in my list because it's not one of my favorites. How about you? <laughs> yeah, I agree. I definitely think people would be, I guess, upset that we didn't at least mention them. Um, so it's, it's for the best to rip the bandit off now. Um, neither of us are huge fans of those franchises, so they're definitely not sort of in our top 10 swords. Um, you know, they might not even be in our top 20 swords, but they're definitely worth uh, noting because I know a lot of people uh, will be upset if they aren't. So. And and also one more, um, one of our favorite games ever, obviously The Witcher, um, but there's no one iconic sword above the rest. It's really not about the sword, but about the wielder in that game. Um, there are some cool swords in there by all means, and Skyrim probably same, but it's not really about a specific sword. So that's why they didn't have entries into the list themselves. <laughs> 